Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you all here this morning. I invite you to turn and greet the people sitting around you. Today, we are celebrating Youth Sunday. So you will see some of the youth of Holy Comforter taking a prominent role in leading today's worship. Um, Throughout the service, you will need your bulletin and your book of common prayer and your hymnal. Um, and during the gospel hymn, children ages three up to second grade are invited to follow the small wooden cross and make their way out to children's chapel, where they will have a lesson that is more age appropriate. Once again, welcome and good morning. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by our faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you have acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in them purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does this is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope you are all having a good Sunday. It is quite a nice day outside and a nice way to end the week. My name is Olivia Casabon, and I'm a junior at David W. Buller. Apart from being active in the church as an acolyte, I am an active student in JRTC, as well as youth government and throughout the community. The three years of being in high school and then coming almost every weekend to Holy Comforter have highlighted to me a great difference between the two. For school, students are rough and tend to stay together and not stray from their beliefs or even being accepting to new beliefs, but here is the quite opposite. The church has done a unique job not often done in today's world. The first being a building of my morals as a person, it being an accepting of others regardless of who they are or what they believe, and the second showing me the true meaning of being a follower of the, Lord, the word of the Lord, regardless of my position in life. Now. Why is this important, and why would I even be something I talk about today in front of this congregation? I say this as a calling out unto the youth of our church for the de development of their morals and personal awareness of not only themselves, but of the world around them through their entire future. The development of morals is often something not to be thought of as a pillar for growing up and as a person, but I would argue the opposite. An often sad case I see, especially at school, is youth like me having no moral compass. So when things like drug, sex, and quick money, and not giving a care for others around them show up, they are quick to jump in with the regardless of their effects in the future. Even for myself, I see a test to do the right things for myself and for the others around me each day. And if it hasn't been for the church, I am almost certain I would have picked the wrong option. Another part of my life, Another part of my call to youth is a remembrance of following of God's word regardless of our future positions in life. There is no doubt in my mind that each youth involved with this church will end up successful in their life, and however that may look, what must be remembered and what is most needed in our today's world is a drive to help our neighbors around you and to treat others around you with dignity and respect no matter their past mistakes, social class standing, or beliefs. Take joy in helping the world around you and realize success and being a helping hand are possible together. So again, to the youth and to even adults in this audience, look deeper in the teaching of the Lord and see what morals and self-development you can achieve by taking note. Thank you. Have a good day. Good morning. I'm Kelly Hatch, and I probably have not had the opportunity to meet some of you. My family is new to Holy Comforter. I'm headed to college in the fall to study political science because I enjoy learning about different cultures and people. One of my strengths in being able to be open and curious towards new experiences is that I'm grounded in knowing who I am and whose I am. My faith has guided me through my growing up and through my family's transitions over the past few years. For all four years of my high school career, I have attended a Christian school in Fort Mill, South Carolina called Walnut Grove. Four years in a Christian environment has shaped much of who I am, and this morning I would like to share with you all two invaluable lessons I have learned from this experience. Firstly, the importance of fellowship. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone, when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. As followers of Christ, we are called to walk in fellowship with one another. And during my time at Walnut Grove, it has been made apparent to me that faith goes far beyond a personal relationship with God. At the beginning of every day, we pray. Every day we have Bible class. Every Thursday morning, chapel. And at the end of the week, prayer group. These practices may label us as a Christian school, though they would be meaningless if it weren't for the zeal that many of my classmates hold for the Lord. Through shared testimonies, worship, and supporting each other in prayer, I have seen the Lord at work in my school community. I have witnessed a birth of a newfound intention by much of the student body to be vulnerable and considerate of growth. Sorry, to be, um, I've witnessed the birth of a newfound intention by much of the student body to be vulnerable and considerate of others in pursuit of their faith. And in return, this has sparked a tremendous amount of personal growth within my own relationship with Christ. Having a positive, Christ-centered, pure community has made me feel more accountable and given me a place to be open and authentic through prayer and conversation. Secondly, the importance of mentorship. This spiritual growth that I have witnessed is in large part due to good example by our teachers, especially our Bible teacher, Mr. Williams. From Mr. Williams, I've learned the importance of surrounding myself with those who are more spiritually mature. Mr. Williams opens his classroom early for us to visit him before school. He has especially been a positive role model for the guys, and he opened up chapel for students to share their stories in a way that had not been done. The mentorship he has provided to me by being available and present with us while pursuing God in his own right has had a profound effect on my life. I'm very fortunate to have mentors like Mr. Williams. As I graduate high school, I plan to seek similar relationships and continued mentorship. I look forward to growing my relationship with Christ as I take my next steps, and I'm grateful for the, for the foundation I am launching from. Thank you. I invite you to stand and turn to page 358 in your books of common prayer as we join together in proclaiming our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Gathered in the care of the Good Shepherd and guardian of our souls, let us in trust pray for the church and the world saying, Lord, have mercy. For all those who serve in the Holy Church of God, who serve tables and who preach and pray, who shepherd the lost and care for those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who care for the sick, the dying, the hungry, destitute, and the mentally ill, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or soul, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, that they may be comforted, we pray especially for Cesar Ortiz, Mother Gay Silver, John Sepelak, Deanne Smith, Leslie and Hannah Newman, Abby Lynn Robinson, Judy Robinson, Caroline Bosbyshell, Millie, Tonda Bynum, Jane, Connie, and those we now name either loud or in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and for all who grieve, that in Christ who triumphs over death, they may find light perpetual and blessed assurance. We pray especially for David Peacock, Dick Snellsire, and Mary Kane, and those we now name either aloud or in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the joys and gifts of life, large and small, remembered and forgotten. We give thanks for the altar flowers given to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for this church community by the Yaramala family and for those blessings we now name either aloud or in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for those sharing their time and talent for spreading the gospel at Holy Comforter. Today, we remember the Holy Comforter Youth Advisors, including Beth Hardin, Samantha Heron, Drew Kirkland, Tammy Langley, and Diana Smith. O loving God, we commend to your mercy all the peoples of the earth and pray that we and all your saints may share life in your eternal dominion. Enable us to know that by Christ's wounds we have been healed and that by the power of his risen and spirit-giving life, we are empowered to serve you all our days. We pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please do be seated. Once again, good morning and a very warm welcome. If you're visiting with us this morning, you are especially welcome, and I invite you to find our QR code in your pew and scan it, and you can find out more about us as a church. Do we have anyone with us this morning celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary this week who we can pray for? So today we are celebrating Youth Sunday um, and graduates in general, and I would like to invite our graduating youth to come up to the front. Um, our high school graduates are listed in the bulletin on page six, and they include Gia Doan, Abigail Driscoll, Aurora England, Kelly Hatch, Brandon Holloway, Emery Oreskovic, Livia Ruta, Bennett Snellsier, Charles Whitmire, Corey Wickham and Justin Stallman. And Beth and Samantha are going to present some books, I believe.
and we have a prayer for graduates. Um, if you are graduating from another level of schooling or life achievement, I invite you to stand. And now we pray. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. May God bless you all and congratulations. And another big thank you to all of our youth who are leading our service today. We appreciate it and we appreciate you. And we are so glad you're part of our Holy Comforter family. I would like to draw your attention to just a couple of notices. After this service this morning, we have our Come When You Can book group in the parlor. Um, and we also have a Holy Comforter Saints and Stories session, and that will be in 207 in the Van Every Building. So grab your coffee and your cake and make your way to one of these. That would be wonderful. Correction? Oh, that was just nine o'clock, but not after this one. Okay, never mind. The book group is still meeting, but otherwise you can mingle and socialize. Um, also, please make a note in your calendars that coming up soon will be our change of timing. We will switch to a summer schedule on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, and so throughout the summer, we will have a single English speaking service at 9.30. So starting on May 26th, a 9.30 service. And the week before that is Pentecost, when we'll have a 9 a.m. and then an 11 a.m. bilingual. So take this home and mark your calendars so you get the times right, and we'll all be here, and that will be splendid. Um, and now I invite Vicky Bott and then Gail to come and speak. If you want. I was told you were, but maybe not. Gail, you go. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Gail Fenimore, and I am uh, chair our uh, social um, and racial justice um, circle, a compass circle group. And we are participating in the diocesan Give Up Your Silence campaign. Our postcards have arrived. There are some outside of this door, and there is a display in the um, uh, for your area where we have social hour. You, and there are some instructions and in, there are links in the blast um, and in your bulletin. But on the back of this card, you can write any concerns you have, um, any information you wanna give our legislature. The DASAs and staff will have a legislator, um, legislation day and meet with all of our legislators. And they are gonna take all of our postcards from all over the diocese with our um, politely written concerns or interest or thanksgivings for things they've done. And I really encourage you all, there's a box, drop them in. We need them back by May 1st, and then we will get them off to the diocese. So give up your silence, let your voice be heard, and um, I appreciate your participation. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? No. I'd also like to point out that tomorrow at 6 p.m., um, Dara Owens is hosting um, the architect Susan Mayer. That should be a very interesting evening, and you are all invited and welcome to go to that. As we receive communion today, there will be a couple of different options. You will receive by intinction. There'll be an intinction tray on the floor here and on this side of the altar rail. Intinction is where the wafer is dipped in the wine and then given to you. If you come up to the altar rail on this side, you'll receive the wafer in your hand and you may then drink from the common cup if you would like to. If you need gluten-free, please come to the altar with your palms down, and that's a sign that you need gluten-free. Or if you prefer to just receive a prayer of blessing, come forward with your arms folded across your chest. 
but please know you're all welcome. You are all invited to receive at the Lord's table in whichever way you feel most comfortable. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
tender, good, and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death. we, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for you, God's people. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We continue on page eight of your bulletin. In order that all may receive a Holy Eucharist, Kathy Taylor will take communion to Jeanette Murray today. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. I invite you to stand for our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. What you choose changes you. Who you love transforms you. How you create remakes you. Where you live reshapes you. So in all your choosing, may God make you wise. In all your loving, may Christ make you bold. In all your creating, may the Spirit give you courage. In all your living, may you become whole. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and those for whom you pray, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.